Hello and welcome to this new video of the Open Computers tutorial series. In this video, we want to take a look at components and to give you an overview what are the components and how to use them. I'm here with Sangar, the lead developer of Open Computers, and Daka Total, our cameraman. And well, let's go into it. Yeah, so after the last video, which showed basically how to write programs and how to use components. So the idea was it might not be a bad idea to explain what components actually are and, well, how to use them in general. So components are basically stuff you can use from your computers. So components are um, connected to computers, um, either if they're blocks via and indirectly touching the computer or if they're items by being placed into the computer. So for block components, um, there's a number of components. So there's the redstone block, there's the holograms. Um, screens are basically also components. Um, the motion detector is a component. The geolyzer is a component. Computers are basically also components. Um, robots are basically also components. And for items, pretty much every item that can be inserted into a computer is also a component. So components are just objects that can be manipulated from computers, that can be sent commands from computers, that can send events back to computers. So for example, for the screen, uh, you can send it, uh, tell it to turn on or turn off and the screen can tell the computer that someone clicked on it. Now, again, back to the how things connect. Um, for blocks, it's, uh, as mentioned, it's um, by touching directly or indirectly. So, for example, in this bulk of computers and uh, cases, uh, screens here, um, all of these are connected to each other. So this is something you usually will not want to do because what can then happen is that if these were working, the lowermost computer would use the top left screen and the middle computer would use the top left screen and the top right computer would use the top left screen, which is not good. So this is not what you usually want. So normally you want to separate these from each other. Um, to do this, there's, well, three options. Basically, one option is just to leave a block empty between them, so just have them separated uh, spatially. If you still want them to communicate, however, you may want to prefer using a switch or an, uh, an access point. These transmit network messages, which will be covered in a later video. Or you may want to use a power distributor, which is used to basically allow energy to flow between different sub-networks, so to say but it won't um, let components be visible through it. So you can keep stuff separate while still sharing one power input, basically. So if a component is connected to a computer, uh, like in this case, we have, well, we have a screen, we have a keyboard, we have uh, a disk drive with a disk in it. Let's just throw a disk in it. Um, we have the computer itself. So in the computer we have the graphics card and another hard drive. So these are basically the components that are connected to this computer. To get a list of components connected to a computer, there's one simple program which is called components. And this will give you a list of the names, so of the type of component, together with the address of the component, which is another important thing to know. So each component has a unique address. These are dynamically generated but are fixed over the lifetime of a component. So the screen, for example, has uh, the this address here, so 436, uh, 463, etc. And this will stay the same. So even if the, uh, the game is saved and you leave the game and you come back and so on and so forth, this address will not change. It will stay the same. If, however, you break, break if you break the block, if you break the block, um, it will lose this address. If you place it again, it will have another address. For so also, sorry, mm -hmm. if you would uh, destroy the connection between the 
computer and the screen. For example, if they are connected via a cable and you would break the cable and then reconnect them, the address would, would still remain the same. Exactly, yes. Uh, yes, so that's how it works for blocks. And for items, which also have addresses, of course, these will stay the same forever. So even if I take out this graphics card here, you see it still has this address. And if I put it back in, it still has this address and it still works. So that's addresses. Um, if you want to copy the address of a block, which in some cases might be useful, say if you have a redstone block, redstone IO block, and you want to copy the address to paste it in your program to use it. Um, there's one item in Open Computers which is quite handy in general, which is the analyzer. So with this one, if you go to some component block, so let's go to this one here, and you right click it, it will show you some information on the component, on the block, on whatever. But if you uh, shift control, right click it, it will tell you, so it will copy the address of the block into your clipboard. So if I go to the computer now and paste it, so pasting, all right, we didn't mention pasting it, did we? Um, if you paste the address, so which you can do by either pressing the middle mouse button or by using the insert key, what the, the key bind can be changed. So it's a normal Minecraft key bind. Then it will insert the text in your clipboard. And then we see that's the address we just copied. Right, so components, right. Um, so now we know how we can see which components are connected to a computer. Um, to figure out what you can do with them, uh, you go either to the wiki and look them up, which is usually the more comfortable way of dealing with this. Uh, alternatively, you can go into the uh, Lua interpreter and just basically to string the component. So you just uh, get the value of this component. So components can be enumerated via the uh, component library. So let's start with this first, perhaps. Um, the component library provides access to components. So for the computer itself, it doesn't make a difference if a component is a block or an item. It's just a component. And these are the basic methods you have to interact with them. So the most important one will probably be list. This is, this is used to enumerate all components connected to the computer, which is what's also used by the components program. And there are some advanced features like setting primary um, components and all that, which you usually do not need to worry about unless you have multiple components of the same type. So for components, for each component, there is a so-called primary component. Um, the one that actually is the primary one is determined more or less at random. So let's say if I have, as I have here, if I have three file systems, it's random which of these is the primary one. So if you have some complex scheme with multiple, let's say, redstone blocks and you need to control them all, then you probably will not be able to make any sensible use of the system of primary components. You'll just uh, enumerate them with the list function and that's it. But for most cases, it's very useful to use your components using this primary system because what you can use then is you say component dot and then the type name of the component. So for example, for the screen, I just say component.screen and since there's only one screen, this is the primary screen and it will tell me some information about that screen. For example, which are the methods, methods available for the screen and what's, what is its address. And in most cases for the uh, methods available on the component, you will also get a short description text which tells you what this method actually does. So if you do not want to look it up in the wiki or it's just not convenient for you at the moment, this is how you can get some information on your components in the game. Uh, right, so as mentioned, these are the methods on the component. So components usually provide some way of interacting with them via, component, uh, via methods. So in this case, we have um, here the turn on, turn off methods, for example, 
which I can use to, well, turn on or turn off the screen. So if I go ahead and say screen dot turn off, it will go blank. And now it's off. So now I will have to be creative to parentheses off on, on. there we go. Um, so that also works. And that's how you use components in general. So this is not only for the screen, this is just an example. Um, you can use this this syntax, so component dot type of the component dot method name for pretty much everything. And that's how you call methods on components. The last thing to know about components is, as mentioned, they can also actively send signals to the computer. So for example, the redstone block may send a signal if its input changed, and the motion sensor may send a signal if uh, something moved near next to it. Um, you do check for these uh, signals using the event library. So there's this one. And this one has a method called pull. This is what we used in the previous video to query the touch events. And this method basically waits for some kind of a signal, which is injected by some kind of component. And then you can do whatever you want with it, with the parameters given by the component. So a simple way to just check what component, uh, what kind of signals arrive uh, is to have a loop. So we just keep on pulling events and print out the values. So the first one you will see if you do this is, of course, the key up event because I pressed enter and then released it. And this is started on the key down event. So if I click, I get a touch event. If I click and then move the cursor, I get drag events. If I then release the cursor, I get a drop event and all of this stuff. So these are the basic uh, methods of checking what events there are. So if you, if you don't know and you just want to play around a bit, this is the easiest way. Just start the Lua shell, start pulling events, print them out, and then do stuff with the components connected to the computer to see what kind of events arrive. And then you can usually get a pretty good idea of what the parameters are. Of course, as usual, all of this is also documented on the wiki, so you can look it up there too. One general note is that for events in most cases, I think in all cases, probably. The first one is the type of the event. The second one is the address of the component that generated the event. And the rest is then a specific data for this type of event. So in this case, it's the coordinates on the screen. Um, it's the button. So if I right click, it is a one. This was a left click, so it's a zero. And finally, the name of the player that triggered the event. So this is just for screens, of course, again. For keys, it's key down, key up, and so on and so forth. Right. Um, there's one more advanced method of pulling events, which I'll just mention here because it's a little complex to go into detail. But if you saw this before, there's um, a listen and a ignore method in the event library. So what you can do using these is you can event uh, methods which are called every time that an event of a specific type arrives. Um, this can be useful for basically writing background programs which do checks whenever necessary and don't run in the foreground. This is mostly used in the operating system itself for stuff like, um, well, setting the primary components, for example, and for uh, mounting the file systems and things like that. So usually you will not need this. Usually the most you will do is just pull the event you want and be happy about that. Right. And I think that pretty much covers it about components. Well, one, one more thing that is noteworthy is that components do have a concept of visibility. So some components are only usable if they're connected directly to the computer. Most components are usable if they're somehow connected to the computer. Um, so a 
special case, which is the final thing I think that might not might be noteworthy, is um, these floppy floppy file systems in general. Um, if you have a floppy uh, file system in your computer, you will only be able to use this file system from that computer. If it's in a floppy disk, then it can be used by any computer connected to the floppy disk. So that's basically the difference between visibility. So either it's only visible by the computer itself, or it's used usable by any computer somehow connected to the component. But again, in most cases, this should be fairly intuitive and will also just work for any connected computer. It's just a thing you should know in case you run into troubles with this. Right, and that's about that. Um, I uh, did you mention how to uh, get components by address? Um, I think I did not. That's a good point, actually. Yes, so that's a very good point, actually. Uh, so I mentioned that I can copy the um, address of these block components. Uh, and that's all nice and good, but what the f what do I do with this address then, right? Um, one of the ways of getting a component next to um, just enumerating them, which I actually also didn't show, so I do this not by 4.4. Four. Um, I think it's this in component dot list. So this is just an iterator and then you can get the list of addresses and components. If I want to get a component by its address, so let's say I copied this from before and now I want an actual way of interacting with this component, um, I use the proxy method. So you can directly invoke methods on components by using invoke, but this is usually very clumsy. So the way of, let's say, um, let's say we take the screen. Although actually, actually, let's say we, well, we take, we take the screen. So I copy the address of the screen, which is this 463. And then I could say invoke um, address of the component and then the name of the method. And I'll probably forget how to turn it on again, but so this is the syntax for a direct call on a method on a component. And it turns off. And now one, two, one, two, three, on. There we go. Um, but this is usually not very, well, nice to see and to, to write. So instead what you can do is you get a proxy object of a component which takes the address of the component you want the proxy for. And this you can then assign to some variable. And that's the same thing you essentially get when uh, as when you enter a component dot name of whatever. So this gives you a component, uh, an object which behaves the same as the object you get for the primary comp uh, component, but for a component with an arbitrary address. So that's also good to know if you ever need this. Yes. Right. Thanks for reminding me of that. You're welcome. Okay. Good. Well, so we hope that you now have an idea how to use components. In the next video, we will uh, go more into detail and show a bit of uh, how to use components uh, with uh, more examples. And yeah, for this video, we say thank you very much for watching and until next time. Bye-bye.